plastic is everywhere. We use it every day and it has become a large pollution problem across the globe, especially in marine ecosystems. The scary part about the material is that it has become such a big issue in such a short amount of time. Plastic has only been widely used by the public since the 1950s, when the ease of throwaway living and single-use plastics were first introduced to the public. Since then, 8.3 billion tons of plastic have been produced, and virtually all that plastic is still on this planet. There are many environmental issues associated with plastics, but one of the biggest is microplastics, which are defined as pieces of plastic below 5 millimeters in diameter. They are very prominent in aquatic ecosystems, have been found to accumulate pollutants and transfer them into aquatic creatures, and have negative effects on those organisms. While we do need more studies and time to see the full extent microplastics have on aquatic and human health, this emerging contaminant is definitely something we should all be aware of. One of the most concerning factors with microplastics is their prominence. In an extensive study done by Austin Baldwin, Stephen Corsi, and Sherry Mason in 29 different Great Lakes tributaries throughout six different states, microplastics were identified in every single sample. In addition to hitting close to home, microplastics are an issue far away as well. In a study done by A.J. Jameson, microplastics were detected in six of the deepest marine ecosystems on Earth, including the Mariana Trench, which is deeper than the height of Mount Everest at more than 10,000 meters deep. So how do microplastics make their way into the environment? There are many different types of microplastics, such as microbeads, fibers, nurdles, and fragments. Microbeads are small particles of plastics that were used as an exfoliating or scrubbing agent in products such as scrubs and toothpastes prior to their ban in 2019. After use, they would be washed down the drain and escape into our waterways through wastewater treatment plants. Fibers are tiny strands of plastics that are often derived from clothing. These typically enter our water supply after being washed in a washing machine and become of wastewater treatment at plant effluent as well. While measures are taken at these facilities to filter out any microplastics or other debris, not all are caught by the system. In a study done by Maria Kazur, a 96% decrease of microplastics were detected with increasing distance from wastewater treatment plants. As for nurdles, they are small pellets of plastic used as a raw material in manufacturing plastic products and often escape into the environment during transportation. Lastly, plastic fragments, or secondary microplastics, are small pieces of plastics that have been broken down over time by natural elements such as the sun, wind, and water. Any plastic item you use has the capability of breaking down into microplastics, whether it be a plastic water bottle or candy wrapper. So what's the issue with these small pieces of plastics in our waterways? Once microplastics are in our lakes, rivers, and oceans, present chemicals in the water can easily absorb or accumulate on their surfaces. This presents itself to be a very large issue once aquatic organisms are exposed to the contaminated microplastics either by ingestion or through the gills. These organisms not only are exposed to the microplastics themselves, but to chemicals that can have their own toxic effects on them. Once microplastics make it into an organism, with additional contaminants or not, they can pose threats. In mussels, clams, and fish, microplastic exposure has been shown in various studies to lead to a stress response in gills and digestive gland cells that have the potential to cause damage to DNA and the nervous system. If these things are negatively influenced, the overall functionality of the organism would be severely affected. A high amount of microplastics in these organisms could also lead to their digestive tracts becoming blocked or cause intestinal perforation, which can have deadly effects on organisms. As well as affecting larger aquatic creatures, microplastics have also been shown to affect microscopic ones such as phytoplankton. Phytoplankton are tiny marine algae that have many similarities to plants on land in terms of their ability to photosynthesize. Photosynthesis is a process that uses energy from the sun to convert water and carbon dioxide into food for themselves and the oxygen that we breathe in every day, making it very important to the organism and us as well. In a study by Yan Mei Wu on the photosynthetic activity of phytoplankton, microplastics were found to reduce their overall productivity in the higher concentrations. Phytoplankton play a vital role in aquatic ecosystems as primary producers. In a balanced ecosystem, phytoplankton provide food all the way up the food web as the smaller organisms that originally feed on them, such as zooplankton, are eaten by larger and larger organisms. Because of this, any negative effects on them will also affect the structure and function of the aquatic ecosystem as a whole. 
Overall, there are a lot of questions with microplastics, and they still require many studies to be fully understood. Until we get to that point, however, there are things that we can do to slow down this problem. We can work to reduce our plastic consumption by saying no to products with an unnecessary amount of plastic, swap out single-use plastics for reusable alternatives, work to recycle plastics properly, and advocate for change.